This is my video update on this Friday, midday, April the 19th. Let's talk about some news. And how about that Joe Biden, Professor Biden, he was asked by a reporter about steel tariffs and his relationship with Xi Jinping and Professor Biden's reply to the reporter was, don't jump. <laughs> don't jump. <laughs> was Biden talking about Xi Jinping jumping because of the steel tariffs or was he, was he telling the reporter not to jump? <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know. Um, I'm having a very difficult time trying to understand Professor Biden. <laughs> anyway, the big news from yesterday was the early morning attacks uh, inside Iran, against Iran. And these attacks appear to be drone strikes. And from what I understand, these drone attacks did little to no damage on Iranian infrastructure. It looks like Iran's air defenses intercepted all of the drones and whatever explosion explosions that uh, that we saw on social media, video and images of explosions in Iran. These were the Iranian air defenses uh, intercepting the drones that were launched towards Iran or against Iran. So Iranian air defenses, they, they went to work and they took out all of these drones. Where were the drones launched from? I've read reports saying that the drones were launched from Iraq. I've read reports saying that the drones were launched from Azerbaijan. I've even read reports saying that the drones were launched from areas inside Iran. I don't know. I'm not sure where the drones were launched from, but they were definitely launched from somewhere within the region, if not from Iran itself. Now, the collective West media, the U.S. mainstream media, they really played up this, uh, this attack, saying at first that this was a big missile strike and this was the big Israeli retaliation. They were saying that seven cities in Iran were being targeted and hit by these missile attacks. The main target was the city of Isfahan, and there's an air base, from what I understand, in Isfahan, and this air base was being targeted by Israeli missiles. And it was later learned that these were not missiles, but these were drones. But uh, the initial reports from the U.S. mainstream media was that this was the big... Israeli retaliation. It did not look like this was a big Israeli retaliation, but the, the U.S. media, they were making it seem like this was a very big missile strike targeting seven cities in Iran. Now, the Israeli media, they have been very quiet about this uh, attack into Iran. The Iranian media, they were quick to, to put out reports saying that this was basically a pinprick attack that uh, did very little to no damage on Iranian infrastructure. It does look like this was a small attack that was launched towards Iran or from, from inside Iran towards various uh, targets. But uh, was this the full Israeli retaliation? I don't know. It doesn't look like it. It does not look like this was the full 
Israeli retaliation. Now, I've, I've read commentary analysis, which is saying that the reason the collective West media really played up this attack at first is because the U.S. wants to, wants to make it appear like this was a big, successful uh, missile strike into, into Iran in order to dissuade Israel from, from launching a very big retaliation against Iran. Maybe, maybe this is why the collective West media is really talking up this attack. Maybe they're hoping that, that this will convince Israel to, to not launch a very big retaliation into Iran. The narrative, the narrative is, is the most important thing for, for the Biden White House. So present uh, Israel with a very compelling big narrative and, and maybe Netanyahu will say, okay, we're satisfied with the narrative. We don't need to launch a big retaliation against Iran. Perhaps, perhaps that's, that's what's going on here. Or maybe that's what explains the initial reports from the collective West media. Is this perhaps the, the, first, the first act of what's going to be a big Israeli missile attack into Iran? Well, it is Friday. It is Friday and we are coming up on the weekend and usually that's when you see big, big attacks taking place. So I hope this is the end of this entire incident and uh, we get off the escalation escalator. But uh, that's just me hoping. So the UN Security Council, they voted yesterday on Palestinian UN membership. A big vote taking place at the UNSC. And the other day, The Intercept, they put out an article with the title, Leaked Cables Show White House Opposes Palestinian Statehood. Despite Biden's pledge to support a two-state solution, cables argue that Palestine should not be granted UN member status. Now, this article from The Intercept was published on the 17th of April. Ahead of the United Nations Security Council action to consider the Palestinian Authority's application to become a full member of the international body, the United States is lobbying nations to reject such membership, hoping to avoid an overt veto by Washington. The lobbying effort revealed in copies of unclassified State Department cables obtained by the Intercept is at odds with the Biden administration's pledge to fully support a two-state solution. This came out on April 17th that the Biden White House was lobbying UN members to not support Palestinian membership into the United Nations. And yesterday we got the vote in the UN Security Council. And what happened was that the US vetoed the resolution to allow Palestine to become a member of the United Nations. The UK and Switzerland, they abstained. And the US was the only country to veto this resolution. U.S. Ambassador at the United Nations, quote, our veto against Palestinian statehood does not reflect opposition to Palestinian statehood. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations. The, the U.S. is saying that they believe Palestinian uh, statehood and eventual membership into the United Nations should be should be discussed outside of the UN. It should take place between uh, between Israel and the Palestinian uh, Authority, with the U.S. mediating, and and that's where Palestinian statehood should be discussed and negotiated. 
So anyway, that is, uh, that is the vote at the UN Security Council. And the Intercept, they, they saw this one coming from leaked cables that they obtained a couple of days ago. So once again, the Biden White House is caught saying one thing and doing another. And that brings us to Project Ukraine. <laughs> Let's talk about Project Ukraine. So yesterday, uh, Dnipro Petrovsk was uh, hit by a Russian missile. A hotel was actually hit next to a railway station. And the reports from uh, Russian analysts and Russian media is that this hotel was was housing various uh, troops and military officials who were then using the railway system to go to the front lines and the Russian missile, they took out this structure yesterday. And uh, the European Union, they had a special emergency summit in Brussels and during this special emergency summit, Alensky spoke to EU officials via teleconference, via video, and Alensky urged EU officials to provide air defense systems and ammunition, as well as money. And, uh, and we also have have the issue of an electricity shortage in Ukraine. And uh, Ukraine has requested from the European Union for energy assistance. So the EU is now going to have to provide energy electricity to Ukraine because of the successful Russian missile strikes against Ukraine's energy grid. And let me read you a tweet here from Yeroman. Due to a shortage, Ukraine requested emergency energy assistance from Europe in the morning. Ukraine Energy, do you all remember when clown Ursula von der Leyen said Ukraine will be a main energy source for Europe? Yes, I do remember many statements from Ursula where she said that Ukraine was such a good investment that it was going to provide energy and electricity to the European Union and this was going to help the European Union move away from its dependence on Russian energy. I remember those statements from Ursula many statements and many speeches from Ursula making that claim. And now it looks like the European Union is going to have to provide energy and electricity to Ukraine for the foreseeable future. Olaf Schultz, during this emergency summit, he said that Germany will provide one Patriot air defense system to Ukraine. And Pirate Schultz, he further said that the European Union may have found six more Patriot uh, air defense systems to provide to Ukraine. Belgium, they said that the F-16s will be ready to enter battle by the summertime. That is what Belgium is saying. F-16s will enter the conflict by this summer. But we are also getting reports from various military officials who claim that Ukrainian pilots are nowhere near ready to uh, fly the F-16s into battle against the Russian Air Force and Russian air defense systems. The reason being that 
Ukraine pilots have still not learned English. So if we do see F-16s entering the conflict in Ukraine by the summertime, then there is no doubt that the F-16s are being piloted by NATO pilots or NATO contracted pilots. If we see F-16s entering the conflict. So there have been a couple of, of failed sabotage plots from, from the evil, the evil Putin, <laughs> the Putin. He has failed in a couple of, uh, of plots that he has launched against uh, Elensky and also against Germany. The one plot was an assassination plot against Alensky, which was foiled by Poland. The Polish authorities, they foiled an assassination plot against Alensky. Wow. According to Politico, Poland arrests Zelensky with two wise assassination plotter linked to Russia. There have been numerous attempts to assassinate Zelensky with two Ys since Russia's invasion of Ukraine in 2022. A man has been arrested on suspicion of being involved in a plot to assassinate Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, Polish prosecutors have said. The man, a Polish citizen identified only as Pavel K, was arrested in Poland. Ukraine supplied information leading to his arrest. I bet they did. It's the second arrest of alleged Russia-linked operatives this week after Germany detained two people it said had been plotting attacks within its borders. Zelensky has said there have been numerous attempts on his life since Russia's February 2022 invasion of Ukraine. Politico, 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 how many times do I have to tell you? How many times do I have to tell you Politico? Russia's February 2022 unprovoked invasion of Ukraine. <laughs> Politico, <laughs> unprovoked invasion of Ukraine, Politico. Ah, boy. Unprovoked full-scale <laughs> invasion of Ukraine, Politico. <laughs> oh, boy. So, yeah, Poland... They foiled an assassination attempt on Alensky with information provided by Ukrainian authorities. <laughs> Why would Russia want to assassinate Alensky? <laughs> Don't know. <laughs> Don't know. If anything, Russia is doing its, ver its very best to keep Alensky alive. <laughs> that would be my guess. My guess is that Putin and, and Russian intel and Russian authorities, they are doing their absolute very best to make sure nothing, absolutely nothing happens to Alensky because you could not get a more incompetent, dumber, uh, wartime president than Alensky. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I imagine like Putin, he called in all his intel officials into his office in the Kremlin and he's like, look, we got to do everything to make sure nothing happens to Alensky. Got it? And everyone's like, got it. <laughs> oh, boy. You know, uh, maybe, maybe this assassination talk is, uh, is really about the collective West doing something to Alensky. That would be my guess. Alensky's presidential term expires in May officially expires in May. Remember, there were no elections in Ukraine in March, and Alensky's term is over. And so, who knows? Maybe Yermak is gearing up to become the, the president of Ukraine. He is one of Time's, uh, Time Magazine's 100 most influential people of 2024. So I don't know, if I was Alensky, I would be very worried about this report. Not worried about Russia. I would be worried about the collective West. 
maybe they're trying to to put something something together and blame it on on Russia. So they run with with this story. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, Politico, they say in this article that this is the second arrest of alleged Russia linked operatives this week after Germany detained two people it said had been plotting attacks within its borders. So let's get to that story. According to the Moscow Times, which really has very little to do with Moscow, but uh, the Moscow Times, they are reporting Germany arrests two over military base attack plot for Russia. Investigators have arrested two German-Russian men on suspicion of spying for Russia and planning attacks in Germany, including on U.S. Army targets to undermine military support for Ukraine, prosecutors said Thursday. The pair, identified as Dieter S. and Alexander J., were arrested in Beirut in the southeastern state of Bavaria on Wednesday, federal prosecutors said in a statement. The main accused, Dieter S., is alleged to have scouted potential targets for attacks, including facilities of the U.S. Armed Forces stationed in Germany. Russia's ambassador to Berlin was summoned by the foreign ministry following the arrests. So we have Pavel K., who is in custody in Poland for trying to delete Alensky. We have in Germany, in custody in Germany, Dieter S. and Alexander J., who were spying for Russia and allegedly they were plotting an attack against facilities of U.S. armed forces. Wow. Alexander J., Dieter S., and Pavel K. The only, the only people we're missing are Hans and Franz. <laughs> and we're here to pump you up. <laughs> oh, boy. You know that Putin? That Putin... He is the absolute worst assassin slash poisoner slash saboteur in all of history. <laughs> the worst. <laughs> the worst is the Putin. <laughs> oh boy, poisoning the Scripples. That failed. He tried to poison Navalny as well. Remember that one? That failed. <laughs> he just, he's trying to, to delete Alensky. That failed. <laughs> he's trying to, to spy on Germany and, and attack U.S. facilities in Germany. Failed. <laughs> and Putin is bad at this. <laughs> he is really, really bad at this. <laughs> the worst. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> But he wants to conquer all of Europe. <laughs> and he controls Trump. And he controls the U.S. election system. <laughs> I just don't know what to make of Putin. <laughs> I really don't know what to make of him. <laughs> he's all powerful. Or he's, he just bungles and bumbles everything he, he tries. <laughs> he takes a shot at. <laughs> he bumbles and messes up everything. He takes, uh, he takes a shot at. <laughs> or he's all-powerful, <laughs> all-knowing, <laughs> controlling Trump and the Republicans <laughs> and the U.S. election system and the entire collective West election system. <laughs> oh, man. So Annalena Baerbach, she summoned the Russian ambassador into her office, <laughs> into the German foreign ministry. And this is the Twitter X post from the German Foreign Office, the suspicion that Putin is recruiting agents in our country to carry out attacks on German soil is extremely grave. We will not allow Putin to bring his terror to Germany. This was communicated to the Russian ambassador today during a summons at a Baerbach. <laughs> wow, <laughs> wow, it sounds like Annalena gave the Russian ambassador a real 
tongue bath or t tongue lashing. <laughs> tongue lashing, <laughs> not tongue bath, tongue lashing. <laughs> cat is on the hunt. The cat is on the hunt. What's he hunting? I think he saw a pigeon. I think he saw a pigeon. He's making his move. He's making his move. He's waiting and waiting. I think he lost it. Yeah, he lost it. He lost it. It happens, Mr. Cat. But anyway, yeah, Annalena. She gave a real, a real dressing down <laughs> to the Russian ambassador. So that was the tweet from the German Foreign Office and check out some of the, the replies to this post on X from Andrew Karibko at, at a Baerbach. Your country literally plotted to blow up a bridge that thousands of civilians use a day. <laughs> from Juliana, big words for a government that had their pipeline blown up by their own allies and then acted like it didn't happen. <laughs> Estonia, Estonia is saying that they can defeat Russia or an Estonian general is saying that they can defeat Russia in a war. The Estonian general is confident that his country would have won a war with Russia. The commander of the Estonian Defense Forces, Martin Herem, has threatened to blow up the Russian cities of Ivangorod and Pechori in case of Russian aggression, according to him. There is not the slightest doubt that Moscow is allegedly preparing for war with NATO, and he is confident that the Estonian army will win. At the same time, in January, Herem asked the U.S. to supply HIMARS in case of a Russian invasion. However, Tallinn wanted to buy the missile system as early as October 2023. All right, so uh, this Estonian general is saying that his country would have won a war with Russia and that, that if there is a war with Russia, then... Estonia is going to blow up a couple of Russian cities and then they're going to, to defeat the Russian military. And he has no doubt that Russia is preparing for an attack on NATO. So I, uh, I replied to this tweet. I reposted this tweet and I said the original tweet from Yeroman of this article. And uh, I said, this is exactly what a general would say who knows 100% that Russia has zero interest in their country. You say these things because Russia has no interest in, in Estonia. So if you're an Estonian general, you talk tough. You talk tough and you talk big and you say, if there was a war and if Russia decides to attack us, we're going to pummel Russia. Because you know, you know you have nothing to worry about, and you know that Russia is is laughing at statements like this. Oh boy, anyway, uh, ever wonder whatever happened to Nikki Haley? Well, the Hudson Institute, they put out a tweet. When our policymakers fail to call out our enemies or acknowledge the importance of our alliances, the world is less safe. This is why Hudson's work is so critical. Hudson's new Walter P. Stern chair at Nikki Haley. So Nikki Haley got her cushy job at a think tank. And I imagine she's getting paid very, very well. I imagine. So that's the video, everybody. The Duran.locals.com. We are on Rumble, Odyssey, BitChute, Telegram, Rockfin, and Twitter X and go to the Duran shop. Look for limited edition merch. 
The link is in the description box down below. Take care. Are you ready to choose freedom over democracy? Because that's America. Yes. <laughs>